that was probably too much build up, but uh, thank you for stopping clapping really quickly. <laughs> a lot of audiences clap for about a second after people reach the microphone, but I like it when everybody stops clapping when I get to there and then just <laughs> stares at me as though I walked out here with a cat and a nail gun and you have done that exactly correctly, so thank you. I'm not, I'm, I, I do talk very, very quickly, madam, but if I am talking too quickly at any point, if you just think a tiny bit faster. <laughs> Then, then you'll be absolutely fine. Um, I'm not going to ask anybody what their name is and where they're from and what they do for a living and why and what the best thing about it is and if they're in a relationship, who they're in a relationship with and why and what the best thing about it is and how long they've managed to drag it out and <laughs> how much longer they reckon they can drag it out until their secrets are discovered and the whole thing crashes in a sort of huge pile of recrimination and a few happy memories, but mostly <laughs> recrimination. And I'm not going to ask people if they have children and, and you know, if, why they've bothered having children. <laughs> given that overpopulation is destroying the planet and and if the children they have which is their favorite and why is the other so hideous i'm i'm not gonna i'm not gonna ask those questions partly because i think it's wrong to to expect you to come out to be entertained and then provide the entertainment yourself i feel i feel that that's wrong but more importantly and i can't stress this enough i have absolutely no interest whatsoever in any of your lives um, I'd as happily say these words to an empty room, um, but <laughs> unfortunately we need you here to make it viable, so welcome. <laughs> I mean, I, I, do ask, I do ask some questions at some points, but if I do ask what sounds like a question, don't panic, it's not a real question. <laughs> It's merely a device to enable me to get to the next pre-prepared bit of material. And I phrase it like a question because it makes you feel as though you're involved in the decision-making process. <laughs> you are not involved in the decision-making process. It's like, it's like when you're at work and you have an appraisal, at some point during that appraisal, they will say, anyway, what do you think? And they don't care what you think. <laughs> and the entire meeting is, in fact, a waste of everybody's time. <laughs> because every decision about your job and career and future was made before you ever set foot in the room. So you even being there is, is a joke, really. And you know that, and they know that you know that, and you know that they know that you know that. And yet you all still go along with the facade. So when they, when they say, what do you think? You don't tell them what you think. You don't tell them the truth. You don't say, I hate working here, and I particularly hate you. <laughs> Each morning when the alarm goes off, I would almost rather self-harm than drag myself here. <laughs> and the only thing that gets me here roughly on time is the fear of homelessness. <laughs> I hate being here so much that even if I'm desperate for a poo in the morning, I will wait till I get here to do it on your time. <laughs> and use your toilet paper. <laughs> I don't normally have sugar in my tea and coffee, but I do when I'm here just to steal calories from you. <laughs> God, I hate you. You don't say those things. You say something about how you love working there and you feel they give you a nurturing environment and allow you to fulfill your potential. In some ways, you wish you could do more for them because they're like the family, only you, you like them and love them more than your family and you wish they could come for Christmas. But obviously, you have to invite your family who you like less than them. And they, and they nod. And they say something that sounds a little bit encouraging when what they really want to say is, we know that you hate being here. And we hate you being here. You are literally the cheapest person that we could employ <laughs> to do whatever it is you vaguely do. <laughs> and at the moment where we could replace you with some kind of clockwork woodpecker, <laughs> we would do that in an instant. If we could outsource you to anywhere in the third world, we would do that. <laughs> and, and, then, and then you both nod about it, and then you... <laughs> You probably sign something, and then they probably sign something, and um, then you go about your work. <laughs> well, it's just, it's just only fair that I let you know. <laughs>
but, but if I ask a question, it's, it's just a bit like that, really. It doesn't, doesn't, doesn't matter whether you answer or how you answer. I'm still going to do and say exactly what I was going to do and say at that point, regardless of whether you answer or how you answer. And because I have the microphone and the lights on me, I can normally pretend that you've answered in the correct way for the thing I do and say next to appear seamless. <laughs> Is that okay? Yeah. 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 <laughs> I, I'm not, not here for long. I literally am only doing this job because I was delivering a painting nearby. Um. <laughs> there are, when I started doing comedy, I really wanted to be a political comic that dealt with the issues of the day. And then it's like over the 15 years I've been doing it, it's dawned on me that I can't do that sincerely because I don't really care. <laughs> about the issues and I've been trying to work out why I don't really care about the issues and I think I've boiled it down to the fact that I have two ride on mowers <laughs> <laughs> really difficult to concern yourself with what's going on like I, sometimes I'll be watching the news and, and you know I'll look at the situation in Syria and the, the refugee crisis and the fact that we can't really get involved like we're just going to have to let it play out because whichever side we were to get involved in, we'd effectively be employing, you know, out supporting baddies and creating more enemies for ourselves worldwide, whichever side of the, of the, of the, the conflict we, we came down with. And then I remember that one of the mowers has got lights on it. <laughs> <laughs> it's an Atco Fieldmaster. I bought it from a cricket club that was going, going bust. I, I did a fundraiser to help keep them afloat, but obviously I wasn't good enough, so they... <laughs> They went bust, and now I've got their like a forty-two inch rotary mount. It's like full cylinder, like six, but full set of headlights on it. So when I get back tonight, it'll be close to midnight. But assuming it stays windy, so there's no dew, I could mow them. <laughs> and a lot of the conflict in the world would be resolved by just simply giving out more ride-on mowers. <laughs> Well, I, did, I did seven tours of Afghanistan gigging for the troops there, and they have had conflict there for a thousand years, and I will guarantee you there's not a single ride or mower in the whole fucking country. <laughs> so that's, that's kind of the proof. I mean, I do have, I do have some political beliefs, and I, I will share this before, before I, I go. I believe that if Scotland is serious about independence, then next time they'll let English people vote. Yeah. Yeah. If they'd let English people vote last time, they'd be independent. Yeah. And weirdly, if you, if you tell Scottish people that, they will accuse you of racism even if they voted for independence, <laughs> because there's no pleasing them, which obviously is why we would vote to get a shot of them. <laughs> What I really wanted to happen last time was for them to vote to stay and then for us to tell them they couldn't. <laughs> Just, sorry Scotland. <laughs> While you've been talking about it, we've been talking about it. <laughs> and we hate bagpipes and <laughs> we can make our own shortbread. So, um, <laughs> don't, don't cry, your blue face paint will run. <laughs> And obviously, obviously it would be, un be unsustainable. Their, their, their economy would collapse, their cities would be on fire, there'd be children starving in the street. Bono would turn up to make us feel bad about it. So after eight to ten days, we'd have to let them come back. But it'd be like trying again with an ex. We'd go, right, you can come back, but we've got some conditions. That wall gets higher. And there's people outside we don't need anymore, and you're having them. Because I think we can all agree, when you look around at society, there are people that are not equal contributors and we could get rid of them quite easily, yes? Yes, people that put eyelashes on their cars. We don't need those people. We don't need people that will see a dog and think it needs a jumper. We don't need people that own restaurants and serve food on stuff which is not a plate. I don't want a helmet of soup and a roof tile of chips. I don't want tartar sauce smeared on driftwood so it looks like a seagull shit on a fence post. I want to know that it's been in the dishwasher. And the people we need least. And you will have seen these people. And through the summer you will see more and more of these people. 
people that wear wristbands for festivals whilst no longer attending those festivals. <laughs> I don't care that you went to Latitude 2014 and it was banging. <laughs> Get north of the wall, you grimy wristed hippie. <laughs> Take your chances with the white walkers and come back when you've learned to use scissors and soap. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the limit of my political beliefs. Apart from some detailed political beliefs concerning the relaxation of domestic planning consent for extensions in North Gloucestershire. But I have to go, so we'll do that next time. Thank you. Good night.